Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Monique Sartor with Sartorial Interiors in Sydney, Australia. Really great to see you, Monique. Can't wait to talk about your beautiful, colorful home. You really took it from sort of dark and dated and completely updated it. Can we start with the kitchen? Because the kitchen is like a candy store to me. There's so many vibrant <laughs> colors and it's just so beautiful. So tell me about your approach here and why you sort of converted it to a rectangle and what you did here. It was just a square. There was literally nowhere to sit in the kitchen and eat. So, you know, I would be in there cooking and I would be taking food out to the family in the dining room. And I felt very disconnected. So we knocked the two rooms down into one long rectangle, really. And we reconfigured it so that the existing hallway was made into a pantry and powder room behind that space and injected it with colour. And the other thing with this kitchen is that I personally don't find appliances terribly attractive. So I have concealed pretty much everything. It's just a really serene, relaxing and bright space, really. I do enjoy cooking and I like having the family at the end, like I can help my kids with their homework while I'm cutting up vegetables and things. So I really love, love, love my Long Island. What are the materials in the space? What did you go for in terms of materials? The bench top is Corian. It's an engineered stone. What's that saying? Agnosco ego to know thyself. I know I need something that's going to be very simple for me to manage. So Corian it was. The joinery itself, we did hand painted finish. It's just got a lovely texture to it. If I ever want to change the color of the kitchen or if we sold the house down the track, it can be quite easily painted over to any colour. So this could be, this would look great as emerald or navy, or you could go back to white. The floor is a classic black and white. The windows are all white trim and everything. So, you know, it can be easily switched up if need be. One of the first things that grabs me is the beautiful, colourful uh, seating area. It, it just reminds me of almost like candies in a, in a wrapper or something. It's, it's just have, so joyful. I've loved that fabric for like a gazillion years. You know, maybe I subconsciously did all the colours for the kitchen around that piece of fabric. I don't know. But it was just a, a spot for people to plonk themselves down, put shoes on or off, get themselves organised. But it's amazing. Whenever we have people over, they tend to be drawn to that window seat. They sit there and we just chat for ages. It's really beautiful. Another thing that really jumps off is the lighting. I just love those pendant lights so I was always going to make those work somehow. And the cans, I mean, to be really honest, I hardly ever use them. I always use those those pendant lights and the strip lighting above the, the stove top. I also have a couple of wall lights um, on either side above the, the bench seat. And it's just it just provides the right amount of ambient lighting, but also work lighting, like I can see enough to do things in there. And also painting at a lighter colour is just lifted it enormously. Tell me about that blue. How did you decide on that blue? Yeah. Okay, so I've got some friends who do a paint range with Resine Paints. It's a New Zealand paint company that we also have here in Australia now. And this, uh, this color name is Escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> if I escaped from Alcatraz, that's the feeling I would have of pure You'd be feeling happiness. feeling pretty sunny, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've just always loved that blue. When I was talking to my husband about colours and everything, we both said we loved that blue. So let's just bite the bullet and do it. Really nice. And what about the artwork on the wall there? I actually did that. I couldn't find an artwork that had the right vibe and the right colours and the right size and everything. So after several months, I just thought, all right, I just have to do this myself. So I did. That's a great piece. What was the inspiration for it? I'm a Russophile, so it sort of started out as a, you know, a Russian girl in, you know, the, the lovely headdresses that they wear. Sort of started off with that vibe and then I just kept adding to it. So it's, I don't know, it's a little bit mystical. Yeah, it's a great piece. Thank you very much. Yeah, you might want to duplicate that. Put it up on house, sell it in the marketplace. Oh, that's a good idea. There you go. Now those chairs, the ah, chairs yeah. are really cool too. They look comfortable, they're colorful. Tell me about the chairs. They were originally sort of like just a French linen. I chose a lovely sort of hot pink velvet for the front. And the fabric on the back is actually um, an embroidery. 
So when you get up close to it, it's you can see all the stitching. It's really pretty. They're, they're pretty good. And they're a good height. They're quite easy to get on and off. Even the kids don't have any problems with that. Now, in the floor here, you went with a, a smaller tile versus a bigger tile. If you reconfigured it, you could have a traditional diamond pattern. The space wasn't so big. And so we wouldn't have had many clear diamonds in the space. And I love the way at different angles. So at some angles, they look very square, but in other angles, they look like they're triangle. So it depends on where you're standing and the way they, they look at the time as well. And I like that. I like that play with it. Yeah. And because of the length of the space, there's this infinity effect, right? Yeah, it's like this mirror that. effect. Really cool. What a space. Let's take a look at the powder room. This is a pretty small room. The funny story behind this one is that I told my husband I was going to do wallpaper, but I didn't share with him which one before it went up because I thought he might veto it. <laughs> and I didn't want that to happen. So I just arranged for it to be installed and it was done probably by about lunchtime or whatever. And my husband didn't get home till five or six that evening, by which stage I'd forgotten he hadn't seen it, you know. I just sort of moved on with my day. I was cutting up vegetables and he, <laughs> I won't repeat what he said, <laughs> but he basically yelled out, this time you've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What? It's too late. But you know what? Every time we have a visit to, to our house, if he has client meetings here or anything, this is the first place he takes everyone. He always says, come in, have a look at this. Look what she's done in here. I think it's fantastic. I love it. I love it. I just love the color. I just love how you continue that color in there. Tell me about the little tiny sink. Look at the little baby sink. I know. That is a confined space. And we had to really fight for almost every millimeter in there. So we were lucky to find that that particular sink so it just all worked out really really well and surprisingly when you're in there it feels actually a lot more spacious than I thought it might the other thing is I'm actually allergic to bees right the little doorknobs on the those cupboard doors in there they're actually little gold bees you still love the bees I do I admire their work ethic I love honey they look pretty cute you know they're good workers they all have their jobs when you have like someone who has a beehive kind of explain what everybody's doing you're like, God, oh, it's amazing. And it's amazing. the way they find their way home and the way they communicate and everything, they're, they're really interesting creatures. I did a story with a family here in San Jose. They're, they rescue bees. Like there's sometimes there's honeybees that don't have a home. And oh, yeah. there's like these people who rescue them and they find a family for the bees and they raise the bees. Wow. The bees, every time they make honey, they would pollinate a different plant. And the honey would take on the taste of that plant. So there was like avocado honey or plum honey or whatever. I had no idea. I thought sort of like honey was honey, you know? No. And I started ha having like this plum honey and all this stuff. And it was really cool. Their kids sell it for like, you know, 10 bucks a jar or whatever. And they go out and they make a little money every fall with the bees. But anyway, what's the photo on the wall? Is that another one of your, is that one of your photos on the wall there? That's actually my boy. That's my son. I think you have a yeah. second career in the making here. Oh, thank you. That's the way I got into design in the first place was because I love drawing and painting. It just led me into this path. Well, it shows, and I think your clients really benefit from that, that artistic vibe. So oh, let's, let's go into another artistic space. And I don't often call dining rooms having an artistic vibe to them, but this one does as well. It's a little bit of an eclectic vibe here. Tell it is you. eclectic, yeah. Tell me about this space. We spend a lot of time in here. We do like entertaining. And in the corner, because it is a heritage listed house, it has a really beautiful fireplace. That's the, the original gold mirror as well. That table is an extension table, so I can sit up to 14 around there if I need to. That table's beefy. You could have all 14 it's, people on the table if you needed to. It's so heavy. And also the the um, it's got bits of marble in it. So it's, it's super heavy and really strong. It's fantastic. I just love the, the grain and the color in that. I thought that was gorgeous. And with the buffet, I really love the faceted um, effect of the doors. And we needed more storage in there. That painting above it by a friend of mine who now lives in Malaysia. And um, she's such a happy, bright, gorgeous girl. And that just sort of was perfect, the perfect vibe for this space. And then the curtains also have lots of animals. So it's got monkeys and butterflies and 
Birds of Paradise. It's by Michael Williamson with Osborne and Little. So it just was the palette, my favourite palette in one fabric. It was perfect. So the painting above the piano, my daughter plays the piano. That one's called The Elopement. And my great-grandmother eloped on the back of a horse. She, she went with my great-grandfather to, they went from one town where she was from to another town where he was from on the back of a horse. She married him. Oh, my God. And also that, that horse is sort of grey in colour. And my dad used to have grey racing horses. And I've got a son and a daughter. So for me, that painting, I saw it and I read the little blurb about it and everything. I thought, oh, my God, this is like three generations of my family in this one painting. Love that story. That is awesome. Now, the trim around that room, was that existing? No, I added that. The ceilings are about 3.6 metres tall on this level, actually. And it just felt like the walls were just going on forever. So they needed to be broken up a little bit. And this was just a, a simple but effective way of doing it. Tell me more about your rug. It has a, it has a very bright colour to it. It's really bright. I'm so happy I stumbled across that because it balances the all the blue. There's a lot of blue in that room. I like the traditional pattern in it, but the modern palette, and it really worked back well with the, the curtain fabric. So it was a bit of a stroke of luck. That is not an easy room to pull off. A lot of interesting things in there could drive the room, but you've combined them and it works and it's really beautiful. Oh, thank you. You got time for another space? Can you show us? Yeah, uh, sure. Why don't we go into the beautiful living room? Another pretty good size space. Another fireplace yep. in here. You feel really safe, really comfortable. We've got enough seating for every, you know, whenever we have people over. And we do get a lot of light through those bay windows. Tell me about your window coverings. Oh, yeah. That's my love of color again. And I quite enjoy clashing colours, so putting colours that are a little bit of a surprise together. The pink and the grey and the white stripe with that sort of chartreuse, you know, sateen kind of finish. I think it's fresh and fun and a little bit of a surprise. I just envisaged having them, you know, tie back with that flush of the yellow and got like a 20 centimetre puddle. I just love when the fabric sort of drapes on the ground. Tell me about your other furniture choices in this space. So those pink chairs, I inherited those from my grandmother's sisters and their names were Tup, Tuppy and Glad. And so we call the chairs Tuppy and Glad. They were very tired and um, a little bit worn. So I had them upholstered in a beautiful fuchsia pink wool felt and gave them a new lease of life. And I just, I love that colour. I think when you're working with colour, if you have a gut reaction to something positive or negative, trust it. Everyone sits on those chairs. They're so comfy. They've got stories to tell, those chairs. Yeah, they do. God, I wish they could talk. Right. Love to hear all the things that they've listened into over the years. It's probably some juicy goss. As a heritage home, there were certain things you couldn't change. So what were the things you were happy to keep in the space? Well, for one was all the fireplaces. The beautiful tall ceilings, the ceiling roses. There was a lot. Um, the windows were really beautiful. The timber flooring. We just re-sanded those and restained them. They're in great condition and they look really beautiful. That is fantastic. So let's talk about your sunroom. This is a sure. super dramatic before and after. This looks like an yeah. abandoned storage facility of some sort. And then it yeah. becomes like this could be a cafe. You know, I could see like a cappuccino bar off in the corner here. <laughs> tell, tell me how you transform this and then tell me about this awesome artwork. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so this, this room was really not feeling much love when we first moved in. We just gutted it. We just ripped it all out, put in a really sweet roof with some lovely skylights. In the mornings, the sun comes through the glass wall and that, those tiles are the same, but that's a continuation from the, the kitchen. I think I always planned to put my photography in there. So the black and white kind of just continued. And then just a couple of pops of yellow um, broke, broke it up and brought some life into that space. I had a lot of photos that I really wanted to use. So I had to really curate them right down. It's just a mix of um, stories and imagery. And it just felt the right balance of sizing. I love it. There's a bit of serendipity to your design that yeah. is really refreshing. 
I I love that word serendipity. And I really am a believer in, um, I call them happy accidents. So sometimes, you know, for all the planning you do at the 11th hour, you know, things don't always go smoothly or to plan. A lot of the times that happens and you, you it's those sink or swim moments and you're desperately paddling. And somehow, I don't know if it's your subconscious or whatever, I often will, you know, be worried about things and then at three o'clock in the morning, I'll sit bolt upright and I'll go, I've got the perfect solution. And a lot of the times those perfect solutions work out to be better than the original plan. And so, I don't know, maybe it's just the universe stepping in to gently nudge you in another way. Well, thank you so much, Monique. This was really a treat. So many amazing spaces. I really enjoyed this and I hope to get a chance to talk to you again soon. Oh, thanks, Rick. It's been lovely chatting with you. Come over anytime. You got it. Okay, see ya. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Rick.